Hello and welcome back. So in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to add a zone in which requires auxiliary power into the Vista 20P security panel. So probably the most common zone that you would add that requires auxiliary power would be a motion sensor. And this is actually what we're going to be wiring in and programming into the panel in this episode. Another uh, pretty common zone that you would add which requires auxiliary power would be a glass break detector like this. And another somewhat common uh, zone that requires auxiliary power, I mean it's not really as common but it's not unheard of either, would be a carbon monoxide detector. So first, in terms of the wiring, we're going to start with the motion sensor. So this is what the motion sensor looks like without its cover on. And as you can see, it's got its own circuit board and everything. It would appear that most auxiliary devices tend to have their own circuit boards and their own terminals and whatnot. So as you can see down here, here are the terminals for it. I don't know how well you can really see that, but these two left-hand terminals say common and normally closed. So it looks like with this one, you don't really have a choice. It has to be normally closed. On other auxiliary devices I've seen, there are other terminals that say normally open too, so you do kind of have a choice. And then these other two right-hand terminals say um, negative and positive for incoming power. So... So whenever I wire these auxiliary devices, I just always like to use blue as the common and yellow as either the normally open or normally closed uh, wire. But like I said earlier in the previous video, the order of the common and normally open slash normally closed wire literally does not matter at all. But what I do think is going to matter for auxiliary devices is the incoming power wires. So first things first, of course, I'm gonna wire up the common and normally closed. All right, so now that I got those two in, now we're actually gonna put in the two wires for the incoming power, the negative and the positive. So I mean, just my personal preference, um, I just like to use my black wire as a negative and the red as a positive. But don't forget what I've said about colors in my previous videos. Just make sure uh, they go into the same um, terminals when you're wiring it at the other end. Just make sure it matches. So anyway, I'm just going to get these wires in now. Alright, so we have now gotten these wires into the motion sensor. Alright, so here we are back at the main panel now. So, referencing the schematic once again, it appears that terminals 4 and 5, some of the same terminals in which the keypad connects to, also outputs external power, or auxiliary power. So, it looks like terminal number 4 is negative, and terminal number 5 is positive. So... Taking the other end of the wires that I use to wire up the motion sensor, I'm going to be putting the black wire for negative in terminal number 4, and the red one goes into number 5 positive. So I'm just going to first put in black, which is, in my case, used as the negative wire. And now I'm going to put red in terminal number 5, which is positive. All right, so we, we got the two um, auxiliary power wires in now. And now it's just wiring up the two zone wires, the common and the normally closed. So in this case, we're going to be using zone number three for this one. According to the schematic, zone number three is terminals 12 and 13. And yep, 12 and 13 is right here, these two. So, like I said, order doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put these wires in these two terminals. 
All right, and now we have just finished wiring up the motion sensor, an auxiliary powered device, to the main panel. All right, so moment of truth. So now I'm going to power up the system. So let's see if this auxiliary device, the motion sensor, is going to respond. I saw some lights on there. Looks promising to me. Let's just continue to give it more time. And yep, there we go. Now it's responding. It is indeed detecting now. So, we have just successfully powered up the motion sensor, which is an auxiliary powered device. Alright, so here we are back at the keypad again. So now we're going to program in this auxiliary powered zone, which is a motion sensor. Same steps as before. So now, since we did zone 2 last time, um, and we put this one in the terminals for zone 3, push in 0, 3, and then star. So zone type, I believe, what was it, 04? Yep, interior follower, that's usually reserved for motion sensors. Start through that, start through that. Hardwire type, and yeah, since we didn't have a choice, uh, it's normally closed, which is type 1, yep. Start through that, start through that. Uh, no, we don't need to program alpha right now. Well, let's just make sure there's nothing in there first. Let's push yes, actually. Custom words, no. Yeah, it still has an old name. Let's clear that out. So in order to do that, you just push star, and then the zone number is 03, then it clears. And then to get out of this, it's 789. All right, so we just uh, program that zone. So to get out of this is 00. Star 99 to exit programming. And yep. Still yelling at me about old troubles and whatnot from just previous config. So let's get the motion sensor up here in view of the camera. And let's see, let's put the door contact back together as well. Let's, let's actually um, push star for faults. Yeah, okay, you said that already. Yep, stop moving. Alright, so there's no current fault now, because the door contact is closed, and it looks like now the motion sensor is. Now let's move again. And there we go, we just create a fault. So, we have just successfully um, added a, an auxiliary powered device to the Vista 20p panel. So, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching, and you take care.